Welcome my friends, welcome to another aimless adventure coming to you from Death Valley Junction today. We're going to check out some epic history in this area of the country. Death Valley, California. Death Valley is that way. That's the Armagosa Hotel Cafe. Over there is the hotel. But we're not here to check out either one of those. We're going right there. That's the Armagosa Opera House. It's got an amazing history and an even more amazing woman behind the history. I think it's time we explore more of the Armagosa Opera House. Let's do it. Yes, welcome to Death Valley Junction, home of the world famous Armagosa Opera House. So this building was built in 1924 as a civic center for the Pacific Borax Company for the miners. Uh, it included the Cork Hill Social Hall, uh, doctor's office, a doctor's apartment, uh, a medical facility, there was a hospital morgue, dormitories, private hotel, billiards hall, barber shop, grocery store, bank, post office, and the offices for Mr. Cork Hill. Um, but from 48 to about 67, this town was dying as a junction in the Death Valley until Miss Marta Becca came through. She got a flat tire, which she got fixed across the street at the <laughs> gas station that was still functional. I'm gonna laugh at that one. <laughs> uh, uh, in the 60s, and as her husband was uh, getting the flat tire fixed, she walked around the town, popped her head inside the social hall, saw the opportunity and actually drove to Las Vegas, left town to go pick up a letter from her mom and some money and couldn't stop thinking about the social hall. Came back, found the town manager, rented it for $45 a month. So when she came back, there was holes in the ceilings. The piano was in water damaged and there was no heat source in here. So she patched the wall, went to Vegas, and bought a stove. Then gave her first performance in early of 1968, which 13 people huddled around the stove. About three months later, it flooded again in here. And after that cleanup is when she decided to start painting the walls. And she started with the king and queen of Spain behind you here. And she thought the Medici and the Renaissance was the greatest time of art. Although she painted the king and queen of Spain in honor of the architecture of these buildings. Um, we've got the monks and the nuns. And the little nun up on the top corner is very curious. And she's peeking over at the painted ladies of the night. There were active brothels in Death Valley Junction across the street in the 60s when Martin moved here. Mr. and Mrs. Tubbs, which Miss Shotgun Kitty is represented up there in the wall, were some of the first proprietors other than the Pacific Borax Company to Death Valley Junction in the late 1800s. Mr. Tubbs got a mining claim three miles from the Lila Sea Mine and put in a brothel, a grocery store, and a hotel. He also put in the first school into Death Valley Junction to which the school board came and said, this is great. <laughs> and Marta's like, no, film it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Weird stuff happens in this building. Oh, for sure it does. Um, up here are, in some of the panels, you have the man who's in love with the governess who watches the children for the king and queen, but he can't go down and talk to her. So he's sending her a love letter on the end of a strand of roses. And you have the caddy ladies in the corner who are talking about this situation. I can't believe it's happening. Anyway, in here, that's what happened. I'm not even, uh, I'm not even kidding. Like, the equipment keeps shutting off. My gimbal keeps dropping all power. I told you this place. Weird stuff happened. We had a band lose all of the music on all three iPads. There it goes again. Out of nowhere, and I have full battery. 
All right. So it took Miss Marta four years to paint the walls, two years to paint the ceilings. National Geographic came here in 1970 in the middle of her painting the walls. They did a story about Death Valley and they heard about the lady who danced for no one because she would perform every weekend whether or not anybody came. Everything you see is hers, art. She painted all the sets, all the backdrops. She sewed all of her own costumes. She even composed her own music and would play her own pieces in her place that she would dance to. She danced on point until she was 82 years old and then she did the sit down show and she passed on in January of 2017 and she sits here today next to the fire which has been retrofitted with propane but it is the original stove that she went to Las Vegas to get. We have some famous ballets at Swan Lake with Wagner, it's an opera, Puccini's in the corner. Tell me a little bit about, about this dress. Well, this is where Marta sat. That is her tool from one of her tutus. And so um, after she was not performing on point anymore, we had a ballerina that would come and practice the season here and then perform on Fridays and Saturdays. She was like a ballet mistress. Uh, she would train with them. Um, and so that is forever Marta's seat. So behind that gray curtain is a stairwell that is almost ladder perpendicular because it's 1924. Um, and the, stair, the stairs themselves is not even a whole foot length in width. Um, and it goes up to a small dressing room that's kind of uh, uh, splits the stage up in the back. Um, original tin can lighting. Folger cans that are not movable. We still use them as stage lighting. And the sconces on the wall are Folger's cans painted white with chandelier edges clipped on the end. So her husband, Tom, who ended up leaving her at some point, uh, didn't do anything in this opera house other than build this stage out for her as a birthday gift, because it was a very traditional 1920s stage that ended at the end caps. Yeah, she gave ballet lessons there in the 70s, but there were very few people who ever danced on the stage other than Marta. And now we have shows on Fridays and Saturday nights uh, with other bands, some opera from Las Vegas, uh, a theater troupe from Ridgecrest comes and does original plays here. If someone wanted to come out and see a performance, where would they look? You would go to amargosa-opera-house.com, which is our website, or Google Amargosa Opera House. It's the first one that comes up. And you can see our schedules, and our shows run October through May. Yeah. This is Marta in her younger days. She made a lot of money um, being a fashion model and actually performing in shows. It was that her mother was addicted to the stock market and lost all of her money. Very beautiful. Oh, yeah. And she performed here on this stage up until when? She was 82 years old, which was about early 2000s. I believe. She died at 92, right before her 93rd birthday. I'd like to thank the Armagosa Hotel and our wonderful host, Jenny, for their kindness in allowing me to film. If you're looking for more information, I highly recommend the documentary Armagosa, which can be found in the hotel lobby. If you stop by, tell them Amos Adventures sent you. And until next time, adventure on.